Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. In today's video, I am showing you how to make the Louis crossbody, or she calls it the Louis waist pack. This is the size small, and I love this size so, so much. I've been using one for, I don't know, six, eight months now, and I just love it. It is a great size. Um, I do think the mashup between the size medium and the size small would be a little bit better for me, mostly because my glasses are so big. So sometimes I do have a little bit of trouble getting everything to fit, but if you don't carry a lot, the size small is perfect and you'll have plenty of room for lots of junk. Um, but if you do tend to carry a lot, but you're looking for a nice like crossbody situation, then definitely check out the medium. Uh, the link to this pattern is in the description box below. Uh, my cork is from Fabric Funhouse. Use code SONAR10 for 10% off your first order. Zipper pulls are from Waywack. Zipper tape is from Zipper Valley. Let's see, instead of a clip, uh, a buckle, I did a D-ring and a lobster clasp. So that's a really economical way to cut a little bit of cost off of this bag, especially if you're making them to sell. And let's see, I used Libs Elliott, her new fabric line on the inside, and then I used foldover elastic for my binding. And everything else is just pretty straightforward. Um, this pattern really kicked my booty and you can, I left it in the video. You can see me kind of um, ride a, an emotional roller coaster during this construction process, but that's real life, right? Um, not everything comes out 100%, 100% of the time. So that being said, I love this pattern. It is such a fun um, skill builder. It provides challenge while giving you a meetable goal. So I definitely think that you should check it out. And again, that direct link will be in the description box. And uh, yeah, have fun. Materials overview, we have the front panel and then the two coordinating linings and I interface those with Decaville Light. We have the back section, so this is the back bottom, this is the back top, and then we have the coordinating back bottom piece. I left this one uninterfaced because the back of the pocket I interfaced to give it the structure that it needs. We have the two zipper flange pieces. This is the base with the coordinating lining base, gusset, the main zipper, the back pocket zipper. We have our little wings. That's gonna be where our webbing comes out of. And then all of our hardware. 
So these are for the strap. And I'm either going to connect this little webbing piece with a D ring, like so, or an O ring. I generally use an O ring, but I'm feeling froggy, so I might do the D ring. We'll find out in just a bit, a little bit. And then I have my zipper pulls here. So Cork is from Fabric Funhouse. Use code SONAR10 for 10% off your first order. This fabric is Libs Elliott. It's her new fabric line, and I'm blanking on the name, but I will put that in the description box. But I just love it. I think it's a great coordinate with this olive cork. And then webbing is from Zipper Valley. Zipper tape is from Zipper Valley. My poles are from Waywack, And then my hardware is assorted from my stash. First thing that we are going to work on is the back zipper pocket area and it might be a little confusing because it doesn't look like the the front pocket or the front panel but it will after we do some construction we we will use that to cut this to mimic that same shape so I have the back bottom and the back top and then I have the back bottom lining and then this is the pocket back piece. So you'll notice that the pocket back is slightly larger and that is intentional. And all of this is cut to the specs and the pattern, of course. Then I have my short zipper and my zipper pull. So I'm going to add my zipper pull. Just gonna slide this on. And then now what we need to do is create a zipper sandwich with our back bottom pieces. So I've got these two back bottom pieces that are the same size. I'm gonna lay my zipper tape right side down and you could tape, glue, clip, whatever you choose to get this placed. And so I'm gonna do it to where my zipper pull, so when the bag is done this is going to be along the back side so if you lay it up against your body this is exactly how it's going to be laid when you're wearing it so I'm gonna make my zipper pull open on the left side but if you're left-handed you might want to have it in the opposite direction and if you cut your zipper tape to be a little bit wider what you can do is line up this back end here and then hopefully you'll have enough on this other end to where you can have the pull off whenever you're sewing. Just want to be careful. I almost didn't cut it long enough. We'll see. So just like that. So that zipper tape is laid right side down. I'm going to add another piece of tape here and tape my back bottom lining into place. And so if you have a directional fabric, make sure that you're paying attention to that. And there we go. So now we're going to go to the machine and we're going to stitch. I'm going to stitch my cork side up right across here and I'm going to flip and then top stitch just my exterior into place. I am using a size 18 needle. I am using Olive Thread Tex 70 from Waywack. Um, a stitch length of four and a half and I'm sewing on my Juki TL 2010Q. So I'm just going to fold this up and back, finger press really well, and then top stitch just along the cork side. Now this is just a preference. You can do, you can fold both down if you want the lining to be top stitched. It's totally up to you. So this is what it looks like now. And then I'm just gonna fold the lining down and finger press it out of the way. You can glue or tape this down out of the way just to keep it in place. And I'm gonna grab my back top piece 
and I'm going to tape this into place along the top edge of the zipper tape. Now I find that it's a little easier to apply the tape to the cork itself rather than the zipper tape, but if you are comfortable putting it on the tape, then go for it. And then of course you can clip or glue as well. sure everything is nice and straight because if you sew it and it's not straight then this is where you'll end up with the bubbles in your zipper tape so now is the time to pay attention to that rather than picking threads and realigning it i just have this one little area here that wants to be a pain in the butt there we go and then on the back side what i'm going to do is take this back piece and it goes right side down on the sandwiching the zipper in between but what it does is it ends up being the same size as this back bottom piece and whenever we're done stitching it we're going to flip this up and top stitch and then we'll have an enclosed pocket back in here so i'm going to apply some tape here and stick this into place so that it doesn't move around on me And Jeruzzi, of course, has decided that right now is an optimal time for bath. So be annoyed with me at that sound. Jeruzzi, hey, can you not? I don't know about y'all, but that sound drives me up the wall. She always wants to wait until I'm in the middle of doing something. And then she knows that I can't stop her, too. She's staring right at me. All right, this tape has been a pain in the arse. Jersey, could you quit? All right, so this goes right side down along the back side of that zipper tape. creating a zipper sandwich. And then we're gonna stitch. I like to stitch on the cork side, of course. Get this stitch down. Just like before, I'm just going to fold up the top section here and finger press and then stitch along the front side. And now we have the completed back pocket and we're gonna stitch this all together in just a minute after we mark using our pattern piece to mimic the shape of the front panel. Okay, so this is where we're at. We're going to grab, you can either grab your pattern piece or I'm gonna grab my front main panel because I have made the marks here. Um, I mimicked the marks from the pattern piece onto here, but you're going to line up the marks from the pattern piece right along the center line of your zipper coil and then Mark this, then we're going to trim it to match. So we should have something like this. And then now you're going to trim all around so that it is the same as the front panel.
there's my blade. Oh, here it is. Okay, trim this corner down here and tighten up this corner here. So now because I can and I have the tape for it, I'm just going to add a couple pieces of tape under here in between the back bottom and the back bottom lining. Because I was over at the machine, I didn't have my tape handy, but I'm gonna do it now just to, just so none of this shifts later on. And then now to keep all of this in place and so that nothing else shifts, like the back bottom pocket piece doesn't shift, I'm just gonna go do a basting stitch around the sides and the bottom here. So now this is what you should have, this nice basted section. And then when you open it, you have your little pocket, cute little pocket down in there. I went ahead and engraved my logo with my Glowforge, so that looks good. Now the, the kicker here is you want this to be the same as this. And then, you're good to go. Okay, to finish off the back panel, we need to make our strap wingy dings. And so what I have is my two strap attachment pieces and then both my webbing sections. And what I'm going to do is add some tape to this raw edge of my webbing to stave it from, what's the word I'm looking for here? Um, to stop it from fraying. So I'm just grabbing a little piece of packing tape. You can see this one already has it from where I purchased it. I'm just gonna do the same thing over here. And just kind of wrap it around, trim off any excess. Simple, straightforward. Do the same on this long piece. And it doesn't need to be a bunch. It's about a quarter of an inch, give or take. I'm just wrapping it around. There we go. And lastly, bing, bang, boom. And for this short section, I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna go off the beaten path here and use a D ring, which is not something that I do normally, but I'm just threading that through. And then you can clip or glue, tape, whatever you want here to hold that into place. I'm gonna put a piece of tape here, just along this short edge to hold it into place so that it doesn't shift. like so, and then I'm going to take one wing, I'm going to fold it and finger press it. And then I like to just toss a couple clips on this just to hold it into place. And then what I'm going to do is this curved section here is where I want this short section of my webbing to be. So I'm going to slide it in between the two layers and I'm going to slide it to where it's about a half of an inch coming out of this side here. Now, because my hardware is wider than my webbing, and it's not that it doesn't fit the webbing, but just by nature of having one inch webbing, it is a little bit wider on the exterior measurements. So it doesn't want to seat very close. It doesn't want to nest great next to this um, folded edge here, but I'm just going to do the best that I can to get it as close to that edge as possible. And then I'm going to move my clips so that it gets held into place. And now I am not doing the extra D ring on this section. Like the pattern states, I just, I'm, you know, skipping that. So repeat that for this other side and you have a couple options here. You can work with the webbing just like this and deal with the, slide the strap adjuster later on or you can go through the process and add your strap adjuster to this end now and I'm going to go ahead and do that because I feel like it'll just make it easier later on 
So I'm going to grab my strap adjuster and my lobster clasp. And I'm going to create this edge just like I do on any other folded or any other strap that I make any other time. But I'm just going to overlap. It's about probably an inch and a quarter from this bar here, maybe a little under. I'm going to throw a clip in. And what I've been doing recently that I really like is taking a piece of cork and wrapping it around and making kind of like a, I don't know, it just looks good, a nice clean finish. So I'm gonna find a scrap of that olive cork. I found one, so just a scrap of cork. And what I'm gonna do is cut out my little addition. So I'm gonna cut about three and a half times um, five eighths. Now I'm gonna cut two of those because I'm gonna need one for this side and then I'm also gonna need one for this other end here. So cut both of those. And then what I like to do is add a piece of tape along the whole width of this back section or the wrong side. Now those are prepped and ready to go. I'm gonna knit my little corners here, just a little detail that I like to do. And so what I'm going to do is encase this edge here. And I'm, I'm overlapping, here, let me put another little piece of tape here. I'm gonna tape this guy down into place so that it's just easier to work with. So just like so. And now I'm gonna take my overlay piece and I don't wanna do it halfway because if I do it halfway, then whenever I punch into the cork, it's the rivet's not gonna seat correctly. So I'm gonna bump it to where it's almost meeting up this bottom edge of this extra piece to the bottom edge of the webbing. I'm gonna overlap it by about an eighth of an inch just so that it covers it. But then I know whenever I'm punching through this webbing, it's, I'm gonna actually get the webbing itself and I'm just gonna dry fit it so you can see exactly where you need it to be. So mine is a little long, so I suppose cut three inches by the five eighths. So just kind of dry fit by wrapping it around. And what I'm looking for is I want this to almost come to the end. I'm just gonna do one uh, rivet right here in the center, so I don't need it to come all the way to the end, but almost, so just like that. Then I'll peel my tape. So again, you can see it's just about an eighth of an inch overhanging the bottom edge of that webbing. And I'm keeping it taut. I want it to be nice and tight around the webbing itself. And then you line up all of your edges. And so it should look a little something like that. And it just gives a nice, clean, finished look to the webbing end piece. Should have been prepared, but I wasn't. Shocker, I know. But I'm gonna grab a rivet and my, what are those things? Punch. And I'm just going to eyeball it. I'm gonna put it right here in the center. If it makes you feel better, you can do two here because this will be the only thing that's holding this piece together. So you just wanna make sure that it is done correctly and that you're catching all of your layers of webbing. But I find that this is a bit easier to manage rather than sewing it and trying to sew like a nice crisp looking box. Um, and rather than flipping it and then folding it again, I find that that is, it can, I don't know. I just, I just prefer the look of this over that because then all of the raw edges are totally encased and you can't see them at all. So you're going to set your rivet with whatever tools you have. And then that end of your strap is complete. So now to finish the strap, what we're going to do is feed our lobster clasp on the other short end. 
you're gonna go up and back over that middle section. Oh, look, so I, I twisted it on accident. I'm just gonna flip this down there, there we go. Cause you want your clasp to be facing away from the outside of the loop. And then you go back up and over. And then now you have a fully adjustable strap. But what we've saved is a huge headache of trying to do this at the end. It can totally be done. It's just harder. It's This is a lot easier to maneuver around whenever you have this other end free versus when it's in here. But so now that this is complete, what we're going to do is slide this section and align it against the folded section just like we did with this piece here and clip it into place. And then so now whenever we are done, we have this section pulled out, we have these pulled right side out. It's gonna be one going one way and one going the other way and then they're going to lay on the back pocket panel. But I'm getting ahead of myself. So now that we have this ready to go, oh wait, I just realized you only need one. I don't know what I was thinking. Save that one for another day. You only need one of the this guy here. I don't know what I was thinking that you need two. Being silly. Okay, so now I'm gonna to go to the machine and I'm gonna stitch from here down and down this curved section. And then I'm gonna repeat that on this side. And then we're gonna pull them through and top stitch around the whole piece, around both of the wings. Now that these are both stitched, I'm just going to pull on the webbing and fold the cork so that it's wrong sides together. And then of course you can use your fingertips or a tool to push out your seam. You can roll it between your fingers. Once I roll it out, I like to add a clip just to hold it into place. And then be sure that you're pulling on your webbing so that you've got this section nice and taut. And then do the same on this guy over here. And so you can see it didn't, it doesn't like to go all the way to the top because of the hardware, but it's all right. If you made this section a little bit longer here, I cut mine to six inches. If you made it eight inches, you would not have that issue. So you could save yourself that if that bothers you enough. But so now that these are flipped and right side out, we are going to top stitch across the top, down the short edge, and then across this bottom as well. Now, if you want to, you can add several more rows of stitching, but I'm gonna add a rivet right here, so I don't wanna do too much stitching, otherwise I'm gonna have to punch through it. So I, I just stick with one all the way around the entire perimeter. And then I'm gonna repeat that on this piece.
course, trim up all your threads. Ta-da! All right, so to secure the webbing in here, I want to add another rivet. And you might be able to get away with the rivets that you used before, but you might find that you need longer post rivets because this is now going through several more layers. So use what you've got. Make sure that you're using the correct size. Otherwise, there's no point in installing a rivet. You want to make sure that the post length is the proper length because if it doesn't seat correctly, then it's going to, whenever you press it, it's going to be off. You need your caps to be right on top of each other. Otherwise, it is null and void. So these are longer posts. I can show you. These are longer post rivets compared to what I used before. So I'm just going to do a test fit here and see what we think. See, so that one's kind of sticking out. It's got a pretty big, it's about an eighth of an inch post still showing. Let me try the shorter one here. And the shorter one is a little bit slimmer or a little bit shorter. So I'm going to stick with my shorter post and get these rivets set. So what you're looking for is you want your post to just barely stick out, you know, where you can catch it. You don't want a quarter of an inch or half an inch sticking out because if you do that, then it's not going to seat correctly. And now, like always, I have my caps and my posts all mixed up in my little bin over here just to keep things interesting. But the sound that you want to hear is this. You just want to hear it kind of pop on. This one did not do that. So I'm going to try a different cap. Okay, so that one seated nicely. And then press those into place. And then what you should have is a really nice looking rivet on both sides. There shouldn't be dents. When you feel it on both sides, it should feel equal. It should not feel shifted. If it's shifted, you need to pop that cap off and redo it because eventually it will pop off and you don't want to send your creation out to the world and have it break on somebody. So we need to attach these wings to our back panel here. I'm just going to trim down this overhang. And then what I'm going to do is paying attention to the way that my clip and my strap are facing. We need this washer, this cork washer that we added to be laying on our back panel. Otherwise, the this section is going to be backwards and that's not what we want. So this is correct. We want to see the outside of our slide. I'm going to lay it on this side over here. I don't pay too much mind to which side of the panel that ends up on. It does not bother me. So if that's something that you're particular about, just keep that in mind. But you want to lay this one first. If you've gone through the process of adding your strap adjuster and your lobster clasp, if you haven't added those yet, that's totally fine. You don't even need to worry about the placement. Just lay them on down. And then I'm just laying this to where this top piece is just barely overhanging the top sex or the top side here, right above the zipper. But again, if you want to be super particular, go ahead and measure it and lay these guys aligning the raw edges. And now I'm going to go and baste these into place really quick. Back panel is now complete. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to make sure that my slide is all the way over to the right. And I'm just going to roll my webbing up and clip it. So that way when we're working with it later, it's not in the way. And there we go. So I've gathered my exterior main zipper, my two zipper pulls, and then my zipper flanges. And we're going to get this prepped and ready to make the gusset. So I'm going to burn my edges here and I'm going to put a zipper pull one on each end. Now, if you want to just do one zipper, that's totally fine. You do whatever you like. It's just kind of a nice feature to have two, but on a bag this small, it's definitely not necessary. 
And so uh, those didn't seat very well. So you can see there's a big bubble here. So I'm gonna pull this side off and redo that because my biggest thing for this is I wanna make sure that these two poles are sitting nicely and that it doesn't disrupt the zipper in any way. That's being a butt. Let's try that again. Try to see if I can do this side. Don't love it. I think it's because when I put my first pull on, it really was uh, off. So going to try by pulling both sides of the tape apart and then see if I can get this situated better. So it's not quite, so I can see as soon as I started zipping it, it's still a little bit off. So I'm gonna try again. I'm just gonna back it off and then scooch the other, scooch the zipper tape down. Still not quite, a little better than before, so we'll see if this works. No, don't like it. What's going on? a little better so no big bubble I'm happy with it so the next thing we need to do is lay our flanges on each edge each short edge of the zipper tape so the thing that I'm paying attention to here is where are my flat edges when you cut out these pieces you should have cut them mirrored same with your linings so when we lay our flanges down on our zipper tape we're making sure that our flat edges are on the same side of the rod or the same side of the zipper. So I'm just gonna clip this into place and repeat that over here. And then when I flip, I'm gonna make sure that my linings are on, the flat edges are on the right side as well. So the flat edge of the flange of the exterior fabric corresponds with the flat edge of the lining. So I'm just gonna clip that, repeat that over here. There we go. So now when we go to sew this, I am using a quarter inch seam allowance. I'm not following the seam allowance as the pattern states. So I am not going to meet this little dot that the pattern piece shows, but I'm gonna use that as still my mark. So I'm gonna sew up this flat edge until I am right in line with that mark. And then with my needle down, I'm going to lift my presser foot and pull my zipper tape to where it's straight along this flat edge here. And then I'm gonna continue sewing. You sew straight across the whole thing. And I'm gonna do that on both sides. All right, so I'm making sure that both of my flat edges of my pattern pieces are nice and actually lined up along the side of my zipper. So I'm stitching up until I get to where that dot is. And now my needle is down, I'm gonna lift my presser foot and I'm going to turn, I'm gonna pull my zipper to where it lines up with that flat edge and then I'm going to continue sewing. looks like this and now what I'm gonna do is fold this back and out of the way and I'm gonna top stitch and I'm only gonna top stitch on my cork side I'm gonna leave my my lining still folded the other direction so just top stitch this guy there we go one side is done and now we're gonna flip and do the other side 
Oh, but actually, so once you top stitch your cork, if you do how I'm doing, pull your lining over, finger press it, clip. Now on this side, because the way that I sew, whoa, the way that I sew would have me starting up here at the top, but because I don't want to have to start with my zipper all cockeyed, I'm gonna stitch from this side here. So I'm just going to keep in mind where that dot is and just stitch from my lining side. So again, once you get to the dot, you're going to, I like to hold it back here, lift your presser foot, pull your zipper tape to where it lines up with that flat edge, lower your teeth, or lower your presser foot and then stitch straight across. All right, now fold this exterior and then top stitch. All right, so I grabbed my two zipper gusset pieces and we are going to lay those on the opposite side and sandwich, stitch, flip, top stitch, just like a normal situation, but I will show you now how I'm going to do it. So I'm going to start with my cork side and put some tape and then I'm going to take this guy. I'm going to start at one edge and work my way down. Now when I get to where my pulls are, I'm going to move them out of the way because I don't want the bubble from the pulls to be present when I tape this into place. Otherwise, you're going to see it after I sew it. And now ideally what should happen is your zipper tape should have enough width to where it lays on this nicely. But if you have a little bit of excess, just make sure you're splitting the difference between each side. All right, so now we need to grab our two zipper gusset pieces and we're going to create a zipper sandwich, putting the cork on the right side of the zipper tape and the lining on the wrong side. So I'm gonna start by adding some tape to my cork side. Sure it's nice and stuck down. And then you're going to just lay it right side down on that tape. I'm going to put a couple of clips in this because I want to move my zipper teeth or my pulls out of the way so that I don't get a hump where these two pulls coalesce. It creates a slight bump. So I'm going to move them out of the way, but I'm putting the clips on here so that way the tape doesn't come unstuck. And then just continue it right on down like so. Okay. And now what we need to do is stick this to the wrong side. 
And because I do have the pulls and the clips already going on over here, I am just going to put it on my cotton piece, which I never do, but do whatever makes this easiest for you. And same thing, I'm going to move my pulls out of the way. And, ah, keep her moving. My tape got stuck to my clip and it pulled it off my lining. Okay, so I think what happened was when I was ironing interfacing my gusset lining piece, you can see here it shrunk ever so slightly. So I'm going to split the difference of these two and hope and pray that it does not come back to bite me in the butt whenever we're stitching our gusset to our main panels. But hey, let's keep things interesting, shall we? All right, so once you have your zipper sandwich, you're gonna go to the machine, stitch, flip, top stitch. This is what we're looking like. Uh, because I don't top stitch my lining, it doesn't want to lay nicely. So what I'm going to do is just add a piece of double stick tape here right down the center. So that way I'm not fighting with it. And what this does is ensures that there's no like bubbling once the bag is turned right side out. I don't know if you've ever noticed it, but sometimes a lining can be a, like just slightly larger it's the same size as the X here, so when it's stuffed inside of the bag, it's got a little bit of bubbling going on, and I don't like that. I like to avoid it as, as much as possible. So adding this piece of tape here right down the center, it just keeps things nice and smooth. I almost just pulled off my zipper pull. No. All right, so now we're to our base. So you're gonna grab the exterior and the lining, and we're going to lay it right side together. And I am paying attention to it meeting up along the back edge here. I don't know if the pattern says if there's any excess in either direction, which way you should favor it, but I'm going to favor it toward the back. So you're just clipping that right side down and then you're going to lay your lining right side down as well, creating another zipper sandwich, but this time you're encasing the entire gusset. So I'm going to go to the machine, I'm going to stitch, and then I am going to flip the base down and top stitch just like I've been doing for all the rest. And then we're going to repeat that on this side. We're going to pull the base over to this side and pull the base over to this side, so on and so forth. like that and then I'm going to take this other short edge here and we're going to line it up on this side over here again I'm paying attention to line up the back section not the front of the zipper I 
And then your zipper gusset is a lot longer than your base, so it's gonna be a little pain in the butt. But just get everything clipped, held together, and then stitch. Do the same thing as before. And then same thing, I'm going to just reach in here so I'm separating where the base and the zipper gusset are and I'm just gonna finger press this out of the way and top stitch. And this can be kind of a pain because it's connected now but it can be done. So it just kind of looks like a jumbled mess, but what we're going to do is flip where the cork is on the outside, lining up our two bases here. And you can kind of finger press and get an idea for how everything's laying. If everything is laying nicely, which is what we're looking for, then we can glue or tape our base into place here. Um, again, personal preference, but I don't want this happening whenever I go to stitch it to my exterior or to my front and back panels. So I'm going to put a couple strips of tape here and then tape this into place. And I'm keeping it out of my seam allowance. So I'm placing the tape about a half an inch from the long edge here. And I'm going to do another piece for the other side. So it looks like that. Let's have two pieces of tape, but it's out of the seam allowance. And then the thing is that when you peel the tape, don't let your lining touch it yet. So peel the tape, and then what you're going to do is you want to grab it here on the sides. And what I'm going to do in one fail swoop is I'm going to put pressure along this bottom edge so that way as soon as you stretch it out, it'll lay nicely. I don't really know what to, how else to explain that, but see, you can see where it's starting to get to where it wants to stick, but I wanna make sure that it's not gonna get any bubbles or be weird. So I wanna pull it taut to where it's laying nicely, and then I'm gonna apply pressure and stick the tape together, or stick the two together. And that way, here on the inside, it, you're not getting like a weird gapping on one of these seams. I hope that makes sense. It sounds jumbled in my head, but you just want to pull it taut and then apply pressure. And then that way it splits the difference of the fold. Oh, see, here's a little bit of an inconsistency. So this is what I was trying to avoid. It didn't do a good job of it, but what you want to do is just kind of pull it taut. Let's try again. I'm going to peel the tape. I'm going to try that again. All right, so now it's sit it's settling in nicely here on the edges. I don't have any weird gapping. And there is our gusset. Now that we've got it taped into place, what I wanna do is just add some basting stitches because you can see here my little wings are winging. So I'm gonna go and stitch from here down across this whole bottom edge and then back up. But I'm not gonna do this side because the tape is keeping that in place, but you can certainly sew around the round here so that way nothing shifts and moves around on you if you didn't tape it. All right, so this is what we're looking at right now. I just want to trim off any little fuzzies that I might have accrued from flipping everything around. And then the other thing I want to do is see, so I have this overhang here on this little wing, so I'm just going to snip it to where it's equal. So I just lined it up here with my base and now for the fun part we get to start assembling our all of our pieces so i'm going to start with my front panel so this is the panel that has nothing on it 
I'm gonna mark my centers. I'm just gonna mark the front and the back. I can never remember if I'm gonna need the mark to be on the front or the back. Probably the back. So I'm gonna do the same thing to my lining. Now, starting with the exterior, and I'm working with the front. The front of the panel is the ones that has the one that has um, the zipper flanges and the raw edge here. We want to make sure that it is flipped wrong side out, and I'm going to line up my side panels here, and then I'm going to mark my center here. I used to snip into the zipper tape. I do not anymore. Um, it just really lowers the strength of the zipper tape when you snip into it. So I'm not doing that these days. But I'm gonna mark this bottom section as well. So now in a perfect world, these lines should meet up. So we've got our two center lines here and our gusset marks here from our pattern piece. In a perfect world, that should all meet up this side should meet up with that side and vice versa all the way around. We're gonna try, we're gonna see how it goes. So I'm gonna start by taking this side gusset mark and lining that up over here. And then I'm gonna repeat that for this side. And then in a perfect world, what should happen is you should be able to ease everything in around it. We're gonna give her a go. So I just lined up my two center top marks and then I'm gonna do the same for my bottom down here. And then we'll see what happens. Now, historically, I've always had a hard time getting these types of patterns to nest well together. But we'll see. Side one doesn't look too bad. I'm gonna snip into this curve just a couple times so that this will splay out and hopefully eat up that center mark or that, that it ease all of that into place. Something that I've noticed when I've been making these bags in the past is that if you, when you're sewing this section right here, if you don't sew, or it doesn't naturally want to go in this far over this um, curved edge on the zipper flange. So I'm gonna keep really close eye on that today when I'm sewing this. I've noticed it in my last two that I made where it just doesn't want, the stitch, the stitching just doesn't catch that section. So I don't know, sorry, I feel like I'm being confusing, but. I've just noticed in my previous ones that you have to be really aware of where your stitch line is, otherwise you're gonna miss and there's gonna be a, a little gap right here. See, and so this side here wants, it doesn't wanna lay nearly as nicely as this side did. So I don't really, I just always kind of have issues with this type of stuff. I'm sure it has something to do with the fact that I didn't follow the um, the seam allowance and I kind of messed up my zipper. Remember I made it a little bit shorter. So I'm sure that is all playing into this. But as long as you can ease it in pretty well around it, you're good to go. Just keep pushing, keep moving forward. And see, so this one does not want to go all the way to the end of the main panel here. So I'm just going to kind of clip it where it wants to be. And we have the fourth and final curve here. 
So because my zipper gusset was shorter, I'm going to have to shorten the this main panel. It's gonna have to come in somewhere. So it makes sense that it's trying to eat up these outside edges. And this is where I generally see it. If I misalign my zipper gusset when I'm sewing it all together, it's normally these far corners that you notice where the difference wants to come out. So I mean, for all intents and purposes, I think that's pretty okay. Let me check this one one more time. What I'm trying to avoid here is I don't want there to be any buckling in the zipper tape when I'm sewing it. Otherwise, there's going to be folds. And I can kind of see one right here. It wants to start. So I'm trying to figure that out and ease this in a little bit more to avoid that from happening. I also generally have, or I see some issues come up when I've got a piece of cork or a thicker textile and it's being sewn directly to zipper tape. There's always a little bit of funkiness to it because this piece is a lot stronger than the zipper tape itself. So if there's gonna be any buckling or weirdness, you're gonna see it in the zipper tape. And it's just kind of a fact of these types of patterns. I've noticed that this is not the only one. Any pattern that has fabric going straight onto zipper tape like this in a curve, at least for me personally, it always turns out a little funky. Okay, I think that that looks pretty good. I've got about 27 million clips in there. That is just fine. So now I'm gonna go, I'm gonna start here at the bottom and I'm gonna stitch around the entirety of this round. And I'm gonna be really careful around this section here, right where the zipper tape meets up with this flange. Make sure that I'm stitching over that so that I avoid leaving a hole right there. Same thing on this side. I'm also gonna lower my stitch length just a touch, about three and a half, just to make sure that when I'm sewing around these curves that it's a just a tighter um, stitch length than hopefully, yeah, I don't know. I'm just, I'm shortening my stitch length. Do with that info what you will. just went right over the um, the seam from the zipper gusset, so my machine was not happy about that. Move my poles out of the way. If you have a tool, this is a good place to use it, especially once you get onto your zipper tape up here. So I've got a little bit of buckling here where the gusset shifted on me. So I'm just going to pick out some of these stitches and try to ease it into this bottom straight edge. Now I'm picking out to where I'm about an inch and a half or so from this back curve back here. Sorry, I know you can't tell, but I'm just picking out all across the bottom edge until about one, an inch and a half from this curve and then I'm going to just try to ease it in. Still 
wanting to buckle on me over here, so I'm just unpicking and easing in until I can get it to lay nicely. over here in this curve see if I can't push it out make this all match up a little better all right hopefully that did it all right let's go flip and see so I tried, <clears throat> I tried to unpick some stitches here, fix some stitches there. Um, it was not working. There was no way it was going to work. Um, so I unpicked it all. As you can see, this is the front panel. I did accidentally snip the zipper, which is really frustrating. Um, you can see right here, there's a, like a, a gouge in the gusset from I'm assuming this corner here from where I sewed in too far I'm gonna be honest if I didn't have the completed back panel I would just be scrapping this right now because I'm pretty frustrated but I'm trying to persevere um, this is just not the caliber of work that I'm used to putting out like the cork is now really wrinkled which is like not a huge deal because I can likely um, steam that out but it's just this is one of those projects that always gets my goat, um, which is a real bummer because I love this bag so much. I just wish, um, I don't know. I just, I don't know what, I don't know. Um, so I cut out a new front panel. So we're gonna try this. Um, I compared the two to see what happened. And the height wise, height wise and width wise it's actually fine it's just here on these corners so I'm hoping that this new panel will um, play nicer so let's give it a go I know that these projects are typical um, I mean it happens to me a lot I know that probably a lot of people think that it doesn't but it definitely does um, I get super frustrated with patterns all the time um it's just a part of this hobby you know you're gonna get irritated you're gonna get pissed off and i'm just trying to remember that like hey this is normal it's just frustrating because it's such a great pattern and i cannot figure out what exactly i do every time i make it it's just something I'm just, I don't know. I, I want to be able to make a hundred of this, but I just don't know that this is like going to be one of those for me, which is a real bummer. It's such a cool design. And I know we all have those, those patterns, but this, um, in no way is a reflection of Tara with uh -Oh Creations. Uh, she's a very great pattern writer. This is definitely user error. This is me. I've never been good at these types of patterns. Um, what? There's one that I tried to do recently. Which one is it? It's oh, the spring roll pouch. I had a hard time with that one too, and I was thinking about that earlier. And it's it's again, it's a pattern where you sew the main panel directly to the zipper. And I don't, I just don't know what it is. It's like a lot of those, the Tremont bag I have a hard time with and same thing. You sew it right to the zipper. So I'm not sure if I'm just psyching myself out or what, but okay. So see, there's a big gap right here and there's a big gap right here. And like, usually when you're going like on this back side, you would just snip into this and then you could fillet it out. But this you can't really do that to, especially not me because I went so far into my darn zipper. All right, so I'm just gonna try to lay it. So this is how I'll be sewing it. So I'm just trying to lay it to where it'll be splayed out.
Okay. It seems to be a little better. I'm gonna go back to the machine. We're gonna take a deep breath and we're just gonna try it again. Maybe, let's see. This is already being funky right here. So this is what happened last time. I had it all clipped, it looked great. And then as soon as I started stitching, you know, as soon as you apply the pressure and you start actually, actually like putting needles through this, it shifts, things move around a touch. And it happened right here in this curve. And then what it did is it put a huge bubble that I was working my way around. And that always shows its face in these corners. So, I'm gonna nip into the gusset corners. And my goal for that is to, whenever it's splayed like this and I'm sewing, to give it some extra spread, some extra reach. But I need to be careful because I've already trimmed this corner whenever I finished it last time. But I guess at this point, it's like, what do I have to lose, you know? Okay, so I'm just gonna clip it as well as I can. All right, try over here. You just have to be sure that when you nip into the corners like this, that your seam allowance is big enough to cover all of those nips, otherwise you're gonna have a hole. Which I'm sure you guys already know that. At this point, I'm just talking to myself. <sighs> I'm sure you can hear it in my voice. The exasperation is big right now. I'm trying to push through though. All right, so we're gonna go give this a college try. I'm also just wondering if I should just go ahead and like lay. So that's the other thing. Here's the other one that I already messed up. But I could use this one. Just wondering if I should do this all in one fail swoop so then I don't have to do it twice. I mean, is that crazy? I don't know. It's just frustrating too because I've made several of these and I haven't struggled this much. And of course I'm gonna struggle on the one that I'm videoing. So why wouldn't I? Yeah, I just don't know that that's a smart idea. Things are already shifting and I haven't even, I don't know, it's really annoying. See, I just noticed that this is not lined up over here. I'm just gonna go stitch this down. This side looks much smoother, so I'm just gonna roll with it. So I'm unzipping this, just kind of folding it in and out of the way. It 
And then something else that I did this time is I didn't do my entire quarter inch seam allowance. I did just under. So then when I'm sewing this on, I can stitch the full quarter inch seam allowance and hopefully hide all these first stitches here. That's the game plan. We'll see how it goes. I'm gonna go sew around this. This time I'm gonna start sewing it here up at the top and sew down and around, and then I'm gonna stop my stitches here and then I'll flip and sew the other way. Let's see if that helps anything. All right, so this is what it's looking like. This side looks pretty, uh, like decently smooth. Right there's a little rough. I can tell that these corners, because everything is encased inside of here, I don't have a way to like get in there and move the gusset around and make it lay nicer. So, I mean, at this point, this just is what it is. Um, I'm almost a little nervous to trim this down. I'm just going to trim this down just a touch. just want to be careful not to catch the zipper tape again. I don't know how I did that last time. But that's maddening. I'm just going to snip into it a little bit too. Just so that way if there is a lot of excess in there, it can kind of lay down on itself. See, it's just really gross on these bottom corners, but I don't really know what else to do. It's just gonna have to be a free gift. My sister's been asking for one for a while, so it is what it is. Um, so the other, <clears throat> the next option to close up this birthing hole in here would be to fold over or fold your raw edge under and then you lay it just so, and then you can stitch all the way around, but I'm not doing that. Um, I find that whenever I try to stitch around this top edge, I like the look of it afterward, like when it's done, but then the inside is choppy, um, and so I'm not gonna mess with it. I've also done them where I haven't top stitch this and it looks fine you know and once the bag is used and it's kind of settles in it um, you don't even notice that it's not top stitch so I'm not gonna mess with that tonight I was just noticing that because I did my seam allowance the way that I did it got I was able to cover it all and you can't see any of the original stitch line which that's a plus so we learned that so that's a good idea to do in the future. Um, but so what I like to do though, because I'm not gonna stitch all the way around, I like to just create a fold and you can do that however way you want to. Um, putting some double stick tape here and using that as your fold line re works really well. But I have found that just putting a piece of hyper stick double stick tape down here holds this in place 
and then I'll iron over it just to kind of make sure that it's super stuck. And I have been using mine, the very first one that I ever made, I all I did was glue it into, or tape it into place, and it is still nice and rolled under, and I do not see my, my, origin, my stitch line. So that's what I'm gonna do for this one too. So all I'm gonna do is just put a piece of tape on the underside here, fold it under, and then I'm gonna tape it into place right there. Now you can whip stitch this closed by hand if you don't want to see those stitch lines. There are several options that you can do here. But I'm just going to use half inch tape. And I'm going to stick it down onto the gusset side. And so I'm encasing that whole stitch line. So I can't really tell what you can see right now. The sun has gone down and my lighting has changed. And then so keeping this edge right here I'm rolling that under and then I'm sticking it down right on that double stick tape and so it looks like that you see so you're none the wiser all right so before we can <clears throat> excuse me attach our back panel to the bag we need to take the remaining lining and tape glip glip tape glue or clip it into place you can baste it um, basting would probably be the easiest but I'm just gonna tape it cuz I'm over here so I'm just gonna put some strips of double stick tape my half inch tape here across this back section keeping it out of my seam allowance of course And then I'm going to lay this wrong sides together with the back panel. All right, and then now what we can do is lay, so with our interior flipped out, unzip just a touch and then lay these right sides together match up your center lines and clip and what's so interesting about this pattern is generally speaking whenever I get to this back panel it lays in so nicely and I don't have the issues on the back side that I have on the front and I couldn't tell you what the difference is um, the only thing that I can point to is that the front goes directly to a zipper, to the zipper tape and not to like how this is cork on cork. I just, I don't really know. Um, but it's something that I've noticed with almost every Louie that I've made is that the back lays in nicer. And I don't wanna put the cart before the horse here, but we'll see what happens. So I know that this pattern is old, or not old, but it's like, you know, it's not brand new. And so I'm sure lots of you have made it before. And so be sure to let me know in the comments if you've run into these same issues that I have. And if you have, how have you solved them? Yeah, see, the back panel laid in almost perfectly. There's just a little bit of overhang here. I can probably even ease that in if I really wanted to but it's not like buckling or doing anything funky like how the front was. I don't know. Um, and so I'm going to be using fold over elastic to finish this edge and I am going to actually I'll lay leave that oh. to the <laughs> my uh, Siri said to leave this to the professionals. I agree Siri, but I'm going to lay it into place first so that I can stitch the fold over elastic, the back panel, 
and the gusset at the same time in one, and then we'll flip the folder of our elastic around and do the second line of stitching. So I'm trying to save myself just a little bit or like one extra stitch line. So I'm going to be stitching with the gusset side up. So I'm gonna put the fold over elastic on the back panel. And you wanna make sure, I mean, I guess that's really up to you if you want the shiny side, which is technically quote unquote the right side, or you can use the matte side of the fold over elastic. And I think I might use the matte just because that way it's not shiny. So I'm just going to lift that off and stitch around. Oh, I guess I could try to do it all at once. Anyways, I'm just gonna clip this into place and then as I'm working my way around, I'm going to be pulling on this and adding some tension and I'm gonna stitch it into place. Or that's the goal at least. I was able to do that with the other Louie that I did as my test run. So we'll see how this goes. Who knows? This one has been a wild card. Okay, so I got this side stitched. It's not perfect, but who expected it to be? Not me. Now I'm just gonna trim everything up. And then in theory, we should just be able to take this and fold it right over and stitch it into place. And because I stretched it taut while I was sewing around, you could see it's just kind of naturally flipping over the seams already. So here it is on that side. So I just need to go around and sew it into place. She ain't pretty, but she is done. So let's flip right side out. Ow. with a good steam these creases will settle back down it's just because it's the cork was crunched up for so long and so many times that it just creased it but I think with some ironing and some steam that that should so those should come out Day, it kind of came out cute. It just gave me a run for my money every single step. 
just gonna have to give it a good steam and uh, hopefully she'll be good to go. But she's not terrible, right? She just needs some love. We'll get her there. We're almost done. All right, guys, it was a journey, but we made it to the end. I really appreciate you sticking it out and watching the full video. I hope that you enjoyed the end result. I'm in love with the all over color, the same color everywhere. Normally I got hair, shocker. Um, normally I mix it up and I'll do multiple colors, but I like the monochrome look, especially with the matching zipper tape. And I hope that you do too. Please be sure to like, comment, subscribe, you know, all that stuff. And I will see you next time.